Rose, the night the ghost got in. Written by James Grover Turber. See about the author. James Grover Turber, 1894-1961, was an American cartoonist, author, humorist, journalist, playwright, and celebrated wit. He was best known for his cartoons and short stories published mainly in the New Yorker magazine, such as The Catbird Sea, and collected in his numerous books. He was one of the most popular humorists of his time, as he celebrated the comic frustrations and eccentricities of ordinary people. So, before entering to the lesson, just I want to ask some questions. These questions may lead to understand the story. How do you feel when you are alone at home? Have you heard any experience of a strange sounds when you are alone at night? Then a power cut. Then how do you feel? A strange sounds you'll hear, isn't it? And you'll get little panic. Have you seen the ghost? No. See the key points of the story. Author heard the footsteps in the kitchen. Somebody was walking around the dining table. On hearing the voice, mother came. She thought there were burglars. She threw a shoe at the window of their neighbors, Bodwell. Bodwell called the police. The team arrived. Grandfather called the cops deserters. The cops re returned empty-handed. Next day, Grandfather told that he was thirsty and came to fetch water last night. The story begins with the young James, who is narrator. Hearing footsteps as he takes back. It was around quarter past one o'clock in the morning and everyone is asleep. He was in the bathroom. He heard a strange sound. He was scared. He thought that it was a burglar or a ghost. Mother was asleep in one room upstairs. His brother Herman in another room. Grandfather was in the attic. James went to Herman's room. They both came out and looked downstairs. Nothing was there. They heard the footsteps circling the dining table like a man running and started upstairs towards them. So they rushed into the room and slammed the doors. James slowly opened the door. There was nothing, no sound. Ever heard the ghost again? Slamming of the doors by the narrator and his brother woke up their mother. Mother thought that they were burglars. She did not want to take risk by getting down. At the same time, wanted the police to come there. So, she threw the shoe at their neighbors. The neighbor is bored well. To seek help. She made one of her quick decisions here. Mrs. Bordwell wanted to sell the house because she was disturbed often by James' mother. Bordwell came near to the window furious. After some initial confusion, he understood that there are some burglars in his own house and that he called the police. The police arrived in a short time. A Ford Seedon full of them two on motorbike, eight in patrol wagon, and few reporters. The police arrived promptly and swarmed the house, opening cupboards and drawers searching for entry. They continued the investigation. Meantime, the police heard the creaking sound in the attic. Five or six cops sprang for the attic door before James could explain about grandfather. The grandfather was convinced that the police are deserters and after some yelling, 
shot one of the police with his gun. Grandfather was wearing a nightgown over long woolen pants, a nightcap and a leather jacket. Police realized that grandfather was one of the family members, but they had no chance to say. Before that, grandfather took a gun from the holder and started shooting at the cops. He thought that they were deserters. Ultimately, the police find no burglars in the house, are confused as to how one of their men was wounded. The cops were reluctant to leave the house. They began to poke into the things again. They left the house empty and finally. The family returns to their respective bedrooms. The next morning, the grandfather came down to breakfast looking fresh and well rested. The family thought that the grandfather had forgotten the whole scene. But the grandfather asked with a smirk on his face what on earth the police had been doing raiding the house the previous night. The story ended with the grandfather telling that none of them was bothered to leave a bottle of water beside his bed and the family understood that the reason for the sound from the dining room was their grandpa, not the ghost. Here that imagination. Without imagination, the author thought that it is a ghost and later they thought that it is a burglar. But there is no burglars and no ghost. That is the grandfather's footsteps. Here, their imag imagination rewarded them a sleepless night of chaotic activities.